Hey everybody, this is Michael T. Bradley. Welcome back to Realms Remembered. A little bit of an overall channel update here for you, uh, for those of you who've actually been following for a while, wondering why uh, nothing new has been coming out for a while. It's mostly because I just got through moving. Um, so the uh, past month or so has been pretty busy with that, pretty intense, and, uh, you know, just busy with that. It, it's tough to get a lot of reading in, get a lot of planning in, da 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 I now live uh, about an hour away from Jason, so no clue if or when the Galarian Illuminated stuff is going to continue or any of the other projects that we had planned. So if you were looking forward to that, I apologize, though, of course, something might happen, something might work out. We really just don't have it planned out at this point yet. I'm still trying to get used to my new patterns here and my uh, new environs and all those things, new job, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's what's going on, if you're curious. So related to this warning, I also want to point out that many of the books that I'm going to discuss over this and the next uh, session, uh, I've read now probably three weeks or so or more ago, and uh, a lot of details have been lost, and a lot of things that I wanted to say are probably not there. So I, I do apologize, and I wish I had done a better job of note-keeping, but recently, right at the start of this whole uh channel that I started on YouTube, um, my hard drive got burnt out, and ever since that, I've just found it kind of pointless to keep notes, because all the notes that I had for things before that are gone now. So I haven't been as good about that as I meant to be, but I'm hoping I still have at least uh, something worthwhile to say here, so thanks for uh, <laughs> keeping up the faith here, and uh, hopefully I'll kind of get back into a better pattern as time goes on. So I want to discuss a uh, couple of books today. We're going to start in 1359 with The Night Parade. Let's talk about what makes a horror novel. There are a lot of different theories about this. I mean, horror writing is, in general, a uh, pretty specific genre. I mean, much like romance, you have rules you have to follow. Generally, you have uh, a main character who's dealing with grief over something that's happened in the past, and this horrible kind of dauntlet happens involving either monsters, serial killers, something of that nature, and they come out on the other side stronger. I mean, that is, in general, what you have. However, that's not always the case. I mean, especially in the uh, the classic mold of horror, you have, oh, people going against God's laws and horrible things uh, happening because of it. I mean, some of the, you know, classics like uh, Frankenstein, etc. And some things uh, more along the nature, more along the lines of what I like, uh, for instance, uh, Lovecraft or Arthur Machen. If you're a Lovecraft fan at all and you haven't read any Arthur Machen or Robert Chambers, you really owe it to yourself to read those guys. They came before Lovecraft, influenced him, and are, in my opinion, probably better uh, overall. Great, great stuff there, and uh, they should be available for free download from Amazon, so check that out. In any case, most modern horror follows uh, that sort of format, uh, including most horror movies uh, these days. Obviously, the, the, the mold is broken in all sorts of different ways, but this is what you get. And this is what I think uh, Night Parade is. Also, another thing that's uh, very, very important to horror and noir in general is the unimportance of human life, the, the way that it can just be snuffed out left and right without warning, and it can seem meaningless in a lot of ways. The Night Parade is full of all of these things. Our main character is Mermine Lal, which is a really difficult <laughs> name to say, but fun to read. She uh, she rules Arabelle, but of course she was also a Harper because we're uh, we're into the uh, Harper's books now overall uh, for a lot of stuff here. It, it's kind of like her her old lover comes back and is like, hey, remember that time that I told you our baby had died? Well, I actually sold it to this horrible thing called the Night Parade. Whoops. And uh, I, I can't remember. He's trying to get something from her, and she promises it to him. And, like, our first chapter, it might, it might even be a prologue, our first chapter basically ends with her uh, beheading him out of anger over this and everything. So it's her searching for her daughter. And uh, she finds her daughter, or maybe it's not. I mean, it's, uh, like, it's revealed in the book, but it's, it's not clear for a long time. Time. And since I don't actually remember which way it went, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. <laughs> but it, it's it's her, and uh, she, she eventually finds her daughter with the aid of her old Harper traveling troop, and they uh, they go up against the night parade, and, and it's this whole just horrible thing, because people just die left and right um, uh, throughout this book. I mean, we have maybe 18 main 
characters, I think, and probably a dozen of them die. I mean, I don't know. The, the, the ratio is about the same there, I think, even if I've got the numbers wrong. We have people switching sides left and right. That's another problem I had, is uh, people being stupid. Like, there's this one scene where this guy they find, who's essentially Batman, he has a bat cave, and he's, like, waging this vigilante war on the bad guys, and I'm like, this dude's Batman. Um, which is kind of awesome, I guess. He has this, like, gauntlet thing that when it touches a member of the Night Parade, it will kill them. So they're like, well, to make sure none of us are spies, we all have to touch it. So they all touch it and they're okay. End of that scene is this guy being, re it, it's revealed that this kid, or I don't know if he's a kid, younger, I think, this younger guy is spying on them and they're all like, why are you spying on us? And he's like, well, I work for the bad guys, but I really want to help you out. And they're like, oh, ha ha, awesome. Well, it turns out later in the book, he's a member of the Night Parade, and I'm like, why didn't you touch him with the gauntlet? I mean, come on, like, the whole scene was about that, and you've just talked about, like, how we can't trust anybody and blah, 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 and then a guy who's spying on you, you don't, I mean, uh, anyway. A lot of little things like that throughout the book were very frustrating, but overall, really enjoyable read, and I don't know, in some ways, I forgot to check whether this was written before or after the Time of Troubles books that Cien Cien wrote, because it really felt as if uh, he was just like, man, you know what, I am just gonna like, go batshit with this one. I am just gonna like, take everything that I couldn't do in Time of Troubles and go crazy with it. Like, this was just so over the top, insanely violent and people dying left and right and blah 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 blah, that it was very odd. The one thing uh, that I'd be curious about, which uh, I guess I haven't actually done any research on this yet, so maybe it's explained somewhere, is that a fr uh, friend, well actually Jason, a friend of mine, Jason, um, has a ton of the third edition Forgotten Realms stuff. And I was going through that, and uh, there's a book called, I don't know, Forgotten Kingdoms, Lost Kingdoms, something like that. Uh, Lost Empires, maybe? And um, in there, it gives uh, very in-depth timelines for lots and lots of old kingdoms, one of which is all of the elves and, like, the previous wars, and etc., etc. And it mentions in there that a certain contingent of the elves, you know, they were like a lost tribe or whatever, they went away, stuff happened, and they became the Night Parade. But they didn't seem evil. So I'm really curious as to how these elves that went away and believed in something else and became known as the Night Parade, are, are they the same thing that this book is about? Because um, this book is about like shape-changing nightmare monstrosities. So I'm not really sure how that crossover happened or what's up there. A couple of other minor things I wanted to point out here. Those of you who are fans of the TV show Angel will probably see a lot of similarities between her, maybe she is, maybe she isn't, daughter. I can't I remember her name, but uh, Mermin's daughter and Connor in Angel because there's a lot of like, you know, yes, I know my life's in danger and I've lived a life of hell and you're the only one who's ever shown that you cared about me, but screw off, mom. I mean, there's a lot of that and it gets tiresome, but in many ways, oddly enough, much like I've said some of the other books are about like fatherhood or self-image, things like that, this one is in many ways about motherhood, which seems strange for a kind of adolescent fantasy series to be focusing on. Although, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe young boys those days were into motherhood. I, you know, like Cabbage Patch Kids and uh, Night Parade. <sighs> I mean, come on, look at that cover. Uh, so, that <laughs> screams motherhood, right? Yeah, overall, really enjoyable uh, book, though a bit odd and really dark, and I'm kind of shocked that people haven't mentioned that, and uh, so if any of you uh, agree or disagree, let me know, and if any of you know um, wh what the whole Night Parade thing is and how it ties into the Night Parade mentioned in Lost Empires or whatever that book is, I'd be really curious to, uh, to find out, to hear about that, so let me know. The other book I want to touch on, which I sadly don't remember as much of, is Curse of the Shadow Mage by Mark Anthony. Now, if you'll recall, I actually really enjoyed Mark Anthony's Escape from Undermountain, but then Crypt of the Shadow King, which this is a sequel to, I did not enjoy at all. This one was kind of in between. I, I enjoyed it enough and I made it through it, but there was a lot of skimming. It's a, it's a fun little read and, and it, it's kind of interesting how it matches with uh, Night Parade in the um, chronological read-through. It occurs in 1360, which is a year later than Night Parade, but I mean, you know, essentially it's right there. Because uh, the reason being um, that in Night Parade we have like a 13, maybe 16-year-old girl traveling along with the troop, and in this one we have like an 8-year-old kid who is kind of sort of this incredibly powerful shadow bard. I don't, I don't know. I'm not really sure how that works out, but the kid's tagging along with the main group, and, it, and it's, and 
again, we have another guy who's kind of sort of Batman. This one also just all over the map as far as kind of morality. I mean, one of the main characters is this mage who's made a deal with this, like, undead knight that he'll give him blood every month. It's like, whoa, like, just... <laughs> insane with how like I remember reading the um, Chronicles and Legends series over in Dragonlance and it's like everybody kind of had their faults and their foibles but you know there was Raistlin first time through on this I accidentally said Rassilon which is obviously wrong I meant to say Raistlin who was like dark as dark gets and then everybody else was pretty much good you know, I mean, I, I guess, like, Tannis um, had the, like, thing with, what's her name, like, Kiv, Kefa, something like that, the, the like, evil chick, didn't he? And, you know, there was that, but th that kind of seemed to be going along the lines of, like, love makes you blind and all that sort of stuff, rather than, like, he has a real dark side, okay? In, in this, uh, in the stuff that I'm reading in the realms, it's just, like, man, like, all over the place, anybody might do something horrible at any moment, <laughs> which, I gotta admit, keeps it really entertaining and enlivening. So, yeah, this one is basically, uh, Kaladin or Kalen or whatever his name is, who I think was the hero of uh, Crypt of the Shadow King, is now turning into a shadow mage. And, you know, that sucks, and so they have to go hunt him down. Oh, I remember the one thing about this book that I really wanted to point out is that apparently rules amongst the Harpers have changed in a fairly short amount of time, because I know in uh, Shadow's Witness by Paul Kemp, which uh, comes later, but not that much later, I don't think. Yeah, just a quick little search tells me that it's about 11 years later, so not a huge amount of time later. Um, in Shadow's Witness, Jack like gives up being a harper and the harpers are kind of like oh that sucks that's the end of that i mean he just he doesn't get the resources anymore da -da -da -da. in this one it's like if you give up being a harper we will send somebody to hunt you down and murder you you are free game for any other harper out there to murder and it's like whoa a what <laughs> like the harpers are all about we're dedicated to good now i could see if a harper did something reprehensible, maybe that would be the case. You know, like if you killed another Harper, then okay, your life is forfeit and anybody can take you down. But just like giving up being a Harper that suddenly makes you fair game for any other Harper to murder seems a little out there. But beyond that anyway, so they have a final showdown and Kalen becomes a big bad shadow mage and they take him down and there's music involved and I don't know. It's, it's not great, but it's a decent read and has some fun stuff along the way and that's about as much as I remember and I'm sorry, I'm probably not doing it justice at all, but I definitely do want to stress that I liked it better than Crypt of the Shadow King, and it's worth a glance, if nothing else. All right, that's about it for now. Be sure to join me next time. Hopefully it'll be out pretty soon. I'm gonna tackle a few trilogies head on. So yeah. All right, thanks for listening. This is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered. Let me know what you think.